Now the third type of resource that we can add into our resource sheet is referred to as the cost type. So we have a material type, a work type, and now a cost type. So if we take the My Bedroom file and have a look at the resource sheet, if we want to then add in a resource as a cost type, I'm going to put in a glue as a cost type of cost. So it's not a work type, which is charged at a time-based element. It's not a material type, which is charged at a per unit element. It's a cost type. Now, a cost type doesn't have a material option. You'll see we cannot type into there. It too has initials and it takes the first initial. So I'm going to put the first two. There is also this optional group, so you can group a series of costs together in the resource sheet. There is no maximum option, this is not available. There is no standard rate option. There's no overtime option. There's no cost per use option. There's only how to accrue, which is prorated, start or end. There's no base calendar, but there is a code option. So there's very little that you put into the cost type. The actual values of the costs are not entered here. The reason that this type exists is to allow you to actually enter the costs associated with this particular type, with this particular resource, at the time you allocate the resource, so that you can actually just manually enter a value. So this is not used for materials that we can cost at a per unit rate, is not used for effectively people, but we'll call them work resources that are cost at an hourly rate or a monthly rate or a daily rate. It's for other costs that don't fall into either of those two brackets. And that really was its introduction. When people were unable to fit their costs into one bracket or the other, this third cost was created, which is the cost type. So it's a resource that has a name and pretty much nothing else. It has no values, it has no maximum availability. It just has a name for you to then allocate to a task. And at that point, you can add in the actual cost. So we're going to do that with glue. Because we haven't got a price per glue, we're just going to add in a cost when we need some glue. And the same with nails. So I'm effectively using this cost type for sundry items that I'm not willing to go out and cost at this stage to fill my resource sheet. So I'm going to add in a physical cost at the time I need them. And I'll just change the initials to keep with my own convention of the first two letters. So that's the cost type. Obviously, when we start allocating the costs to tasks, we'll see it in action and see how useful it can be or how unuseful it can be.